Hey everybody, welcome back to the Citizen Sports Weekly. I'm still here. A three-peat of sorts. I like to think I'm following in the footsteps of my hero, Jeff Gordon, and providing adequate substitution. Well, Chris Shearer is... Uh, vacationing. Vacationing? Yeah. Chris, of course, is... Uh, Chris was planning to be back this week. I, however, forgot that I had to go to an awards banquet last night. Oh. So I left... Uh, hashtag humble bread. Hashtag humble bread. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, you know, I intended to, you know, bring Chris back. He was here for a few days this week, but uh, we kind of ran out of time there. I had to leave before Chris got in yesterday, so here we are. Moneybags is back for a third week. I am back. Three weeks in a row. Not bad. What a streak. Yeah, what after streak? not being on since February, I want to say. Yeah. Day that's right. time. So, well, you know, I already kind of hinted at it. Let's talk about it. Jeff Gordon in the 88 car for Dale Earnhardt Jr. That's right. Mixed feelings about it, i got to be honest. As people know by now, um, Dale Earnhardt Jr. suffering some from some concussion-like symptoms. They haven't actually said it's a concussion or what his condition is. Um, stepped out of the car at New Hampshire. Got to give props to Alex Bowman running in the top 10 when he cut a tire and hit the wall. Still finished on the lead lap in 26. You know, overall solid solid first run for being sure. in such big shoes. Um, so I'm bummed about Dale Jr. being out because that's just, you know, anytime a driver's out for, especially an injury like that, it's, it's never a good thing. Right. Um, but I'm pumped that Jeff Gordon's going to be in the car uh, for at least the next two races. And it's tracks Indianapolis this week, Pocono the week after, where Jeff Gordon is actually the all-time win leader. So, I mean, what what better guy would you want in your car? And, um, but on a third note, it kind of blows my mind a little bit to think of this is kind of changing NASCAR history in a way. There's only been one number that Jeff Gordon ran in his whole Cup Series career, which ended last year. And all of a sudden, that's going to be two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's crazy. I mean, uh, when, I, when I first heard this, uh, you know, I... I wasn't too surprised because I think Gordon said, um, you know, I think he said at the end of last season that, you know, while he was retiring from full-time racing, he certainly was interested in maybe making some, yeah. um, you know, part-time swings. So. I don't think he expected it to be like this, though. I don't think yeah. anybody did. Yeah, so, hey, it's going to be cool, and, uh, you know, it'll be nice to see him uh, behind the wheel again, and, uh, yeah, he'll be on uh, my... At this point, I mean, I think he's kind of adjusted to life as a broadcaster. So yeah, yeah. so it'll be uh, kind, of, kind of weird. Uh, for but him, I but. mean, you you don't become a four time champ, a nearly hundred race winner without it's true. you know being a little good at what you do. So I don't think he's lost much. Uh, and like I said, it's two of his best tracks. Obviously, uh, I don't think you have any problem picking it up, yeah. picking it back up, and maybe competing for a win at least having a decent run. It's interesting to know that in this situation, uh, Dale Jr. will likely fall out of chase contention unless he were to come back before the chase starts, win a race, and still be in the top 30 in points. Uh, Jeff Gordon's not eligible for the chase, obviously. But the car is based on owner points. We've never seen a situation like yeah. this. Um, there's a potential of Gordon... Uh, obviously, if he wins in the car, the car is in the chase for owner points, right. which would be an interesting situation. But if he just at least has a few good runs, keeps the car in the top 16 of points. It's interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. We've never... It's, um, it's, it's a unique... There's uh, been a couple of times where it could have happened, but right. just never did. I think this is a, could actually happen this time. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit unique because of, uh, you know, how the chase rules work, and uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. It's yeah. be interesting to see how this plays out, but... Anything else you want to talk about? NASCAR? Oh, there's always things I want to talk about about NASCAR. Because uh, the week after Pocono, and if Jeff Gordon is still in the car, another good track for him is Watkins Glen. Right. Yeah. So, um, and actually, I'm going to be there. I'm having like a whole Watkins Glen week next week. Nice. Uh, Monday, I have a phone interview with uh, Xfinity Series driver Brendan Poole. Um, he was supposed to f visit Syracuse on Tuesday. Um, plans fell through for that. Still was able to connect. Going to do a phone interview. Um, that'll be kind of interesting. Uh, he's a rookie in the Xfinity Series. I don't think he's ever raced at Watkins Glen before, or really any road courses. I'm interested in to 
kind of hear what he has to say about gearing up for not just Watkins Glen, but the Xfinity Series runs at um, Road America in Wisconsin and, and Mid-Ohio. Be interesting to get his thoughts on that. Uh, Wednesday I'll be talking to Michael Printup, the uh, president of Watkins Glen International. Um, they just went under a, um, a, a repaving project at the track. Um, interested to talk to him about how that yeah. went and, of course, gearing up for uh, not only the Cup Series race in uh, a few weeks, but also the return of the IndyCar Series Labor Day weekend um, and sandwich in between. Like I said, with the repave at Watkins Lens, they're doing a test. Um, there's about a dozen or so drivers that are coming out for that. Um, they're having a media availability, of course, so I'll be out there um, covering the action. Nice, nice, yeah. So. Watkins Glen is a, uh, a jewel for us uh, here in upstate New York. Yeah, right it, now, it so. really is. So it's nice to... The number uh, one track. Yeah, according to, as, USA, according to USA Today. Today so, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it really is, because it's always, you know, it's, I mean, it's the closest, really, you're going to get to, you know, it's the closest NASCAR track right. to us, or really the best chance you have to get that NASCAR experience, so... Yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, you know, I, I had a couple friends go last year, and, and they loved it. Uh, it was their first time going to Watkins Glen, and uh, you know, it, it's um, you know, it's interesting. We've talked about it before. You know, it's not a chase race, but it has an impact on the chase. Oh, sure, absolutely. Because yeah. you know, it's only in a few weeks that the chase begins after after Watkins Glen. So. Yeah, it's, let me think. After the Glen, it was only really about four or five races after that. So, yeah. I mean, if you're Good chance to snag a win if you don't have one already, or get a good run to solidify a, a points position into the chase. So. Yeah, and we've talked about it before that uh, you know, uh, you know, with the with this generation of drivers, you know, you don't have those specialists really, uh, you know, not anymore. But you know, it's not that they need to be relied upon. More, more, more and more, the drivers are uh, diver a little diverse in their mm -hmm. capabilities. So. You know they can run on on road courses just fine, and it's and it's not an issue for them. And uh, you know they uh, they can compete here. I mean, uh, you know we've talked to before about uh, Sonoma, and of course, uh, yeah, sure. You know, you know, uh, you know Watkins Glen, obviously, and uh, you know it's um, it's good to see. I, you know I think uh, I can remember some races, and they don't. They weren't really that long ago, you know. You're talking about uh, Boris Said having a big impact. Oh, and, sure. You know, yeah. finishing well, and you know, here's a guy who, you know, really didn't run full time, you know, in, uh, you know, on the circuit. But you know, he would be, you know, the go-to guy. You for know, road I, I even think of a guy like Robbie Gordon. Yeah. Uh, ran yeah. full time in NASCAR, but known as the, you know, think three, two of his three NASCAR Cup Series wins came on. Yeah. Uh, I think. Sweeping Sonoma and Watkins Glen in the same year. Uh, same with a guy like Juan Montoya. Right. Um, but, yeah, like I said, I mean, it, I, 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 I would have a hunch it's got something to do with the chase where every race really counts if you want to be in that final 10 to run for the championship. But drivers are seem to be taking the road courses more seriously and knowing that they have to adapt and not just, like I said, treat this as a, as a, un, as a necessary evil. They have to, sure. okay, this is a race we need to get a good run at. So. Yeah, yeah. So, so what else is on your mind? What uh, else should we talk about? Should we keep talking about NASCAR, or should we switch topics? It's up or? to you. You're the, you're the guest. I just wanted to throw a shout-out. Not that he's really going to watch it, but throw a shout-out to Tony Stewart. I mean, uh, I think we talked after his win at Sonoma. Yeah. Um, but he's not laying down since then. He finished, uh, I think he was like top five at Kentucky, fifth again at New Hampshire last week. Uh I still want to put much stock into him when it comes to doing a chase grid, but uh, stranger things have happened with Tony Stewart. I think of when he won the championship in 2011. I think he went into the chase not having won a race all year. He kind of got in on points and already told his crew chief he was fired uh, and ended up winning five races in the chase and won the championship. Yeah. Uh, or I think of uh, 2006 when he, when he missed the chase but said, typical Tony Stewart fashion, I'm going to go out and win one of the races this, just to show I do belong. Yeah. And I think he won like three or four just in that in the chase. Yeah. So don't count him out, you know? I might just pencil him into my top four, you know, just just as a sentimental favor if if anything. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I think the thing there too is that uh you know knowing that uh you know at the very least you're done you're going to be done, you know, full time. Because um, you never know with these guys. I mean, some of them say, oh, I'm done, you know, I'm out. And then a year or two sure. later they come back and, you know, maybe race part-time. But uh, <laughs> Martin, 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 Martin,
But yeah, uh, you know, with Stewart, um, you know, I think there's a little motivation there that, you know, you kind of realize that, uh, you know, you're reaching, you know, the end of your full-time sure. racing career and, uh, you know, you say, hey, this is the last shot I have at a championship. I, I might as well, you know, give it all I got. And, uh, you know, not that he wasn't good before, but he, he had his struggles there. Oh, and, absolutely, uh, yeah. I think that's, he's bounced back. I, I think of anything, that win just lifted so much off of him and, you know, you know, you just think of all what he went through physically, emotionally. I mean, that that win it seems like just kind of freed him up, and yeah. he's he's Tony Stewart again. So yeah, yeah, I think it's uh, you know, um, you know, I think it's just one of those things that kind of clicks that uh, you know you kind of you maybe you sit down once and you're like, all right, let's see what's on the schedule here. And geez, you know, I don't have a lot of time left here, and you know, the chase isn't too far off. You know, like we were saying, I mean. You know, at this rate, they have uh, you know seven or so races to go, and uh, you know you got to make the most of it. So and then he's going to be running a sprint car. And then he's going to be running a sprint car. Yeah. So. We'll have to see him come around this area, come to Weedsport or somewhere like that. We need to. I've never actually seen Tony Stewart race a sprint car. So. Yeah, yeah. This was before your time, but he came to Weedsport. He dropped in, and I, I'll have to check. Uh, I'll have to check back. I don't think it was around Watkins Glen time. I think it was just you know one of those random. Well, he's he, yeah, trips. he's done that. I mean, he still owns um, yeah. some World of Outlaws teams. Um, he at one time owned an uh, Empire Super Sprints team. I don't know if he does anymore. But yeah, that's the thing. He would never make a, an, an appearance out of it. Like, oh, I'm Tony Stewart. He just a lot of times would be just unannounced, and he would just want to show up and race. Yeah. So that's that's pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to. Always seeing seeing him around our, our area. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. So what else? What else? Well, the Russians well, aren't going to be in the Olympics. Yeah. Well, at least the track and field team. That's right. Know. We we have to talk Olympics. And then we got to we'll talk about Olympics. Up, but, you know, you we know. don't we don't want Chris to fall asleep completely. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, Chris. We're about to not talk about something that's not NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we you know we haven't talked about the Olympics. Let me ask you this because uh, we were actually talking about this uh, on the drive back from. Uh, uh, the Albany Awards banquet last night. What's the what's the what's the what's your favorite sport to watch during the summer, summer Olympics? Olympics? Yeah. Oh gosh. Um, you know, I, I I really do enjoy the the track events because I mean that's just like pure human strength or you know whatever you're you know to watch a guy like Usain Bolt just run like a cheetah. You know. Yeah. Um, so I just love, you know, I, I love I love any Olympic sport. Let's let's be honest. If I'm sitting down in front of the TV, I'm turning on the Olympics. I don't care what sport it is. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll watch gymnastics. I'll watch the track events. You know, the cycling, swimming. Ryan Phelps is back in the Olympics. That's gonna be kind of neat to watch. Or not, yeah. Michael, Michael Phelps. Yeah. 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 For me, uh, you know, um, you know, gymnastics uh, obviously huge. Uh, the women's team favorites to win the gold this year. Uh, you know, watched uh, some of their Olympic trials. You know, I, I watched, you know, a lot of the gymnastics events, a lot of the swimming events. Sure. Um, you know, gymnastics team, very good. Uh, you know, that's going to be exciting to watch. Uh, swimming, you know, what can Phelps do? This is his sure. last games. He said Rio's it. His mom wanted him to go. I remember they were talking in London, you know, <laughs> you know, do you want him to, you know, he wants to retire. And his mom was like, ah, I want to see him go to Rio, <laughs> you know, all this other stuff. So he's doing it. Uh, sometimes you got to make your mom happy, but, uh, you know, he's, he's a contender. I mean, he can win a few medals again. Sure. So, and he's, you know, the most decorated, uh, Olympian, uh, in history. And, uh, you know, um, you mentioned the track events. I, I ran track and field in high school and, uh, you know, to get real specific, uh, you know, I'm always excited to watch the 400 meter and 800 meter. Those are two events mm -hmm. that I sure. competed in. And, uh, you know, when you're talking world-class speed, uh, you know, I, I remember my, my best times in, in the 400. Uh, you know, I, I thought they were pretty good at the time. Then you see some what these sure. Olympians are running. Yeah. They're like eight, nine seconds better. Like, so <laughs> I can drive my, drive my car that fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, it's always fun to see the Olympics. Then you get into some of the team sports. And, uh, you know, it's it's kind of weird with those. You know, I get into, a, you know, the women's soccer uh, competition. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, women's team's always great to watch. Um, well, you have the women's beach volleyball team, I think is what... Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, Carrie Walsh and Misty May anymore. I think they both retired, but 
they won I gold like three Olympics in a row. Yeah, and I think so... Walsh is still doing oh, it. Oh, is she? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's she's got a new partner, so yeah, we'll interesting have to see. what they can do. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's I mean, always fun. My my wife was a volleyball player, so we end up watching a lot of the volleyball. So, um, so yeah, you know the Olympics. Uh, you know, it's, it makes for great TV because sure. you know there's so many options. You know where you can watch it. So you know, flipping around, watching a little track. You know, and some of the more obscure sports too. You know, I, what I'm eager to see is uh, the golf this year. Uh, the golf competition at the lab. Have, have they called you up to be on the team yet? I mean, I think they might get some players. It hasn't gotten that bad. <laughs> it hasn't gotten that bad. But yeah, it's uh, you know, I'll be eager to see that. But uh, yeah, looking forward to the Olympics. Awesome. So let's wrap it up. Money bags will probably be back next. I'll week. I'll be back next week, four in a row. Because uh, Chris is off, and then I think Chris is planning to return in August. And you know, of course, when we think of August, we think of football. Oh, it's going to be great. You know, I didn't want to talk about the Mets, but the way the Mets are doing right now, I'm looking forward to football season. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, it'll. Uh... I think I, I think I kind of jinxed them a couple of weeks ago when I uh, talked about how great they're doing. Yeah, I think Bill's training camp starts. Uh... Trying to get my dates right, but I think it starts within the next ten days. I believe it starts where, next. Where do Friday. they do that? They do that kind of somewhere. St. John Fisher in College. In, okay. In, uh, in Rochester. It's the Jets then are at Cortland. Or the Jets were. were in Cortland. Oh. They're no longer uh, going to be in Cortland. Oddly enough, uh, Cortland uh, was a favorite of Rex Ryan's. He liked to have mm. when he was the head coach of the Jets. He liked to have camp there, probably because and I, and I want to say the Jets decided to move it to their New Jersey site which is fairly close to where you know they play their games MetLife Stadium and sure. where that team has a team's headquarters are but you know I think they I think Ryan Rex Ryan liked it because it was away from all of that uh you know you bring it to Cortland you know nice town you know smaller town obviously sure. than where they were in New Jersey but uh you know just a just a chance to get away from it and um uh, you know yeah I think it, I think it started last year the Jets opting to not go there uh, so they, um, I'm pretty certain that they're not going to return to Corwin at least anytime soon. But um, so yeah, so you've got the the Bills uh, down the road in uh, Rochester. It'll be fun, sure. And you'll have college football starting soon. And that's right. The Orange, Syracuse Orange, are at least something to watch. I think. I mean, a new yeah. coach, right? Do Eric Dungey back as a uh, quarterback. Yeah, I, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, you know what they can do. You know, new. New coach, uh, new offensive system. You know, Dino Babers is an offensive-minded coach. Sure. Uh, he certainly has, you know, the defensive pieces there. But, you know, uh, he's known for his uh, fast offenses. So we'll see how that works. Yeah, and I think if you look at Eric Dungey and even um, what was it Zach Mahoney, the who, You're right. the backup to the backup. Yeah. I, you know, I think the the win loss record doesn't show completely what they're capable of because I think I mean they each both kind of got thrown into a situation where right. um, you know maybe they weren't fully prepared they weren't expecting to start as much as they did probably so it'll be interesting to see you know now that they've had had a year to you know get in shape learn to play more be comfortable with the position what 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 they can do yeah yeah so. I mean it'll be uh, you know it'll be interesting to see how um, how that unfolds because uh, you know, Syracuse uh, kind of in, you know, a little bit of uncertainty there, you know, yeah. coming in with a new coach and, you know, how is the system going to work? You know, are the players, you know, do they have a good grasp sure. as to, you know, what it should be? So, yeah, those early games uh, coming up in late August, early September will be will be the true test. Oh, yeah, sure. So, well, thanks for joining us again, Money Bags. Thanks. I'll, hey, I'll see you next week. I can yeah. say that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be back and... Uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching uh, this week's edition of the Citizen Sports Weekly.